Hi, everyone, and welcome to another Facebook Live. My name is Jeff Palmer. I'm the CEO and founder of Clean Machine. And I've got some exciting uh, news uh, today. And the reason is I freaking love science. <laughs> For those of you uh, who don't know me or who are watching this video and not watch the other ones, um, you probably figured that out already. But I really love science. And, and what's amazing about science, you know, when I when I see somebody on social media post fact, you know, in the big capital letters and say fact, blah, 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 you should always put an asterisk behind that word fact. <laughs> because even if we're quoting science, it's just information that we know up till this point. What we accepted as fact before can be proven and misproven and misproven and misproven over and over again. But that's that's what I actually like about science is that we're constantly discovering something new. And this new information can be beneficial to us. So it's not that, aha, we finally got the answer. It's, well, we got better information than we had before. And that's important. So not to dismiss science, but to take science for what it is, new information that can be helpful to us to improve our lives if we use it correctly. So fiber. OK, so I've been talking about fiber as the fourth major macronutrient. So what is a macronutrient? Well, most of the research scientists and most of the scientists and nutritionists believe that there are three macronutrients, which is uh, protein, carbohydrates, and fats. But I say there's a fourth one, because what is the definition of a macronutrient? One, something you need in larger quantities, as opposed to micronutrients, micro meaning small, <laughs> macro meaning larger, that you need only in very small amounts is a micronutrient, like vitamins and minerals and, and polyphenols and antioxidants, that sort of thing. But a macronutrient is something we need in larger quantities and that is important for our overall health and nutrition. So in the beginning, uh, when researchers long ago were looking at fiber, they thought, oh, well, that's just a piece of poop, right? <laughs> right, that all we do is eat it, it goes through our digestive tract and we poop it out. So it had no use, no fun. And then we said, well, maybe it's actually scrubbing the inside of our intestines and helping out there, bulk fiber, right? Adding bulk, helping retain water, those sort of things. And those are true and those are good. But again, we were not even close to what we know now. So science for, then said, okay, well, fiber isn't even digestible by human beings. We know that's not true. <laughs> so then science said, okay, well, that's not true, but we only digest it in our colons, right? Because our colon actually needs some of the butyrates that are produced from digestion of fiber. So we found that out and we said, well, if there's a necessity for that, if our colon cells require butyrates that are produced by the digestion of fiber, obviously we're doing that. So we found out that sure enough, our, our microbes in our gut actually do break it down in the colon. Well, here's where I've got something new for you. And why this is so exciting is because it's a, such a breakthrough of our understanding of our microbiome. We now know based on this new study, and I'll punch it up right here in the chat box, and I'll also put it up on both of the pages so that you can read the study yourself. And what this found, I'll put it up here on the screen for a second, that the scientists discover uh, a unique metabolic pathway of fiber digestion, and they used metagenomic screening. screening. So what they're doing is looking at the byproducts and, a, and the enzymes that are, are secreted by our microbiome, all the bacteria, the probiotics in our gut. And they screened for those particular things, and they found that it was actually active in the small intestine. So why is that a big deal? Well, it's a really big deal because now we see that digestion of fiber is ubiquitous through our digestive tract. And why is that? If it's not important, why would our, why would our bacteria be breaking it down all along our digestive tract and our small intestine and our colon everywhere? Well, because what they are producing is metabolites 
that affect a whole chain of reactions in our body. That's why they're so important. That's why I say what we're discovering now through research, including this brand new study that shows we're actually digesting fiber even in the upper GI, the uh, small intestine, not just the lower, lower GI or the, the colon, the large intestine. So what they found is they found actually 52 different proteins involved in carbohydrate metabolism. 52, 13 of those just glycoside hydrolases. These are enzymes that actually break down glycosides found in plants. But with all these enzymes available and all these bacteria breaking this down, what is this telling us? Once again, it is telling us fiber is a necessary nutrient for our overall health and nutrition, not only for its direct metabolites, but metabolites that break down into other metabolites that then become signalers. Now I'm gonna post this next study, which leads me into the next part of the conversation. Okay, well, that's really cool that our body is actually digesting fiber a long way. This then tells us that no, Fiber should be categorized as a true macronutrient, meaning you must get it in your diet or you are in putting yourself in ill health. You are not giving yourself the nutrition required. And remember, fiber, polyphenols, these are prebiotics. Our probiotic bacteria feed on both polyphenols, fibers, like fructooligosaccharides, one of the ones that are quoted in this next study I'm going to show. These are fruit sugars or long chain uh, fibers that our bacteria break down and create metabolites like butyrates that improve our immune system, uh, reduce inflammation, especially important after a workout where our immune system crashes and our cytokine production increases and we need to bring those cytokines down. Or in the case of disease infections like, uh, like COVID-19, our cytokines go up big time to try to attack and destroy COVID-19 or any virus, bacteria, pathogen, like uh, different uh, bacteria and, and uh, parasites. So our body goes to attack them, but we need to bring that inflammation down and butyrates which only come from the digestion of fiber by our probiotics. And obviously fiber only comes from plants. So you can see how important this plant fiber is to us, but it actually even affects our ability to maintain a healthy body weight. So let's put up this next study that is really exciting. Um, so it showed, and I'm gonna put the link and the full study up for you it into the comment section and boom and i'll pull it up on the screen just a minute i'm not expecting you to read this this will be on the in the note section and below in the comment section for you guys to read and follow up for yourself along with the links um is that um a study uh discovers the modulation possibilities of certain bacteria, in this case, they're looking at uh, uh, clostrid uh, clostridium, uh, which is a butyrate producing bacteria. Remember, butyrates are only produced by the digestion of fiber. That's how our bacteria create butyrates. So these butyrates then, um, they found that, okay, when you consume fiber in a whole food plant-based diet, all right, or in say anything that has a good amount of plant fiber in it. Um, when you put that in, you are feeding this clostridium. And they found that those with type two diabetes had a very low incidence of uh, clostridium bacteria, these bacteria. Why? Because they die off when they're not fed. If you do not feed them fiber, these bacteria fall away. And these bacteria are producing some interesting things. And I'm gonna call them and describe them to you. Um, so these short chain fatty acids that are being produced by our gut bacteria when you consume plant fibers, then they form short chain fatty acids that make more 
that trigger our gut to produce more glucagon-like peptide one. It's called GLP-1. If you want to look up, it's a, it's a major uh, metabolic target for diabetes. And why it's so important, along with peptide YY or PYY, these are two big signalers. What does GLP-1 do? GLP-1 is a hormone that tells the body to make more insulin. So when you eat a carbohydrate source and that fiber gets digested, it triggers our body to produce more GLP-1 through the metabolites created by clostridium digesting plant fiber. Do you see the chain of events here? You eat plants, great. Whole food plants, especially with high in fiber, excellent. That gets digested by that bacteria, great. We know now it gets digested through our whole digestive tract, not just in the colon. Why is that important? Because then it produces metabolites that go into our bloodstream and trigger a whole process, including GPL-1, that allows us to produce uh, insulin more efficiently. So we can metabolize those carbohydrates, so we can utilize them. That insulin grabs it and sends it to muscle tissue, so we can feed muscle growth, so we can uh, utilize it in our brain, in our heart, in our liver, in our kidneys, all the functions that need these nutrients and this glucose. That is the proper way. Now, when you stop consuming plants, then you're not getting enough fiber. Then your clostridium die out because they have no food source. You're not eating them and feeding them, right? So you are actually lowering your clostridium. Then they are not producing GLP-1 or PYY. And then you set up a cascade of chain of events inside the body that tells your body it doesn't need to produce or is sluggish at producing insulin. And then all that sugar gets stored as fat. This is so important because I want, want you to get this, that, that plants, even if they are higher in carbon, most people say, wow, you know, look at that, um, Look at that apple, it's full of sugar, right? If you just looked at it on the thing, it'd be high in sugar, right? <laughs> okay, it is, but it has lots of fiber in it. That fiber feeds our gut, the gut breaks down that fiber, produces GLP-1, allows for more insulin so that sugar can be metabolized properly, efficiently, and not end up turning into either fat or even worse, not getting metabolized at all and turning into something we call AGEs. Now, AGEs are end products that damage our eyes, damage our feet, our limbs, damage our heart, damage our kidneys. These are all the symptoms we see in type two diabetes, right? And that's the cascade of events, but it all starts with eating of the plants. That high fiber plant, feeds the gut bacteria, produces these chemicals that then get us to, to actually process these sugars. So stop looking at macros and saying, oh, that apple has a lot of sugar in it. It's going to make me fat. Wrong. It has a lot of fiber in it that's going to prevent you from getting fat. It has a ton of polyphenols in it. There is actually a polyphenol called fluoridzin that is in the skin of the apple. And that fluoridzin is a polyphenol that gets fed to our bacteria. They munch it up and produce byproducts that actually um, regulate our blood sugar levels so good. Modern pharmacists have now manufactured fluoridzin in a chemical lab, right? They mimicked what's in an apple and now use it as one of the top diabetic treatments. Why not just eat the freaking apple? I mean, it's right there in nature. This is what I love about science. This can tell you so much. And we need to get past this fear of sugar, fear of, you know, things that fiber isn't, is meaningless, that fiber is just larger poops. No, it plays a very important role in how our body metabolizes all of our nutrients. So this Increase of short chain fatty acids not only helps on the GPL-1 and PPY to help us metabolize these sugars so they don't turn to fat, so they're not stored as fat, so they don't cause, cause degradation to our eyes, to our kidneys, our liver, so they don't cause diabetes, type 2 diabetes. That's what this fiber can do with the help of our probiotics. 
Over and over, we're seeing the more we feed our probiotics fiber, the more these bacteria increase and the reduce of type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure. So it's all about keeping them fed. Now, uh, interesting in this study, it says most studies have shown that probiotic supplements promise to deliver billions of helpful bacteria. Well, there's over 400 strains of bacteria and over 40 trillion bacteria. So you pick up a probiotic bottle of supplements and that's got maybe you know, eight strains, 10 strains if you're lucky, and, and a couple billion. Well, a couple billion to 40 trillion is nothing. And this fact is that probiotics have a very short life. So they die off very quickly. So it's very prophylactic. It only lasts a short time and the benefits aren't as increasing why not simply just change the diet so that you're consuming more of that fiber feeding those bacteria they bloom they populate because there's a huge amount of food source fiber is what they eat polyphenols are what they eat polysaccharides are what they eat all found only in plants mother's milk has some of these things too as well thank you mom <laughs> for providing those but those are two great sources of it you know so when we're looking at trying to get into the best shape, plants are where it's at. So when I went to develop, uh, you know, protein, I said, okay, look, everybody knows you need to consume more protein if you're trying to build muscle, but we also want a better body composition, right? Lower body fat, higher muscle, and you look great. And not only do you look great, you feel great, you're more active, you're more healthy, you're more energetic, you are healthier, you can fight off diseases, you can fight off invasions of virus and bacteria better with a healthier physical fitness level. So exercise is important, protein is important, but so is fiber. Now, when I looked into the marketplace and I saw, wow, all these proteins are using protein concentrates. Okay, why do they do that? Well, it's much more efficient and cost-effective to strip out all the fiber and just give you the protein. If you look at most of your plant protein products out on the market, unfortunately, they're using only plant isolates, which is they're 80% protein. That means the normal, normal approach of it, a plant would be maybe up to 50% fiber, right? They've stripped all that out so they have a higher amount of protein. Well, that's what you're getting without the fiber. And that's where we come into problems. This is the same thing that we're getting when we eat animal products. So when you eat a stripped out plant protein, you're not doing a whole lot better than a basic animal product, which has no fiber, has no polyphenols. You've stripped all that out. So why would we as plant-based companies try to replicate a bad diet. <laughs> we should be improving on the diet. But I know it's important to increase my protein uptake. That's how I built muscle. That's how I got to stage shape. And that's how I became a champion. Oops, this side. <laughs> champion. Well, it's somewhere over here, <laughs> over there. Uh, got a national uh, champion in, in bodybuilding, natural bodybuilding, as well as natural physique. That's how I could get there is be, by modifying my diet. But I wanted to do so in a health promoting way. And that's my give back to you is I wanted to make a protein that was full of polyphenols, this prebiotic, right? Full of fiber in its whole food state. Now you're getting all the protein that you need, but you're getting also that fiber to help you digest that, to build those butyrates. Here's another cool thing. So when you work out with intensity, have you ever heard the lactic acid burn? That's when lactic acid starts to build up in your muscles. Well, guess what? We have a symbiotic relationship with you know who. Yeah, our probiotics. The number one probiotic in our body is called lactobacillus. Lacto, not from, not from, um, from meaning milk, because of lactic acid. So what it does is our body takes this lactic acid from our workout and dumps it into partially into our digestive tract and it feeds lactobacillus bacteria. And in return, the bacteria says, thanks, man. You fit. Every time we exercise, we are improving our gut bacteria. Now, you can continue to exercise and do a healthy whole food plant-based diet, and your bacteria are going to be kicking butt good 
producing all kinds of great chemicals for you to stay in shape. So those lactobacillus bacteria who are consuming that lactic acid then start producing metabolites that actually support the bacteria that feed on fiber. How cool is that? Another symbiotic relationship. You work out, create lactic acid. It's a waste product, right? We dump it into our digestive tract. Those lactobacillus eat it up. They poop out some other materials that our fiber eating ones go, whoa, love that stuff. Great metabolites that help us trigger. And then the fiber ones can grow and multiply. And then those fiber eating bacteria produce butyrates. Well, what do butyrates do? They reduce inflammation. What have you done to your body from working out? Increased inflammation. See the full cycle here? You work out great for your health, produces lactic acid, waste pride product, goes into the digestive tract, feeds our bacteria. Our bacteria says, thanks, man, for feeding me by your workout, then goes over and helps out the fiber eating bacteria so they can produce butyrates that go in and produce butyrates into your system. And that lowers the inflammation that you got from your workout. Beautiful harmony synergy. I love synergistic relationships and what we're seeing right now with this new study and multiple new studies is this amazing dynamic relationship of healthful eating and healthful workouts and how important fiber and exercise are to our digestive tract, which in turn produces lots of different things to keep our body fat low, keep disease states down, keep inflammation down, and promote muscle growth. What a beautiful thing. And that's why I formed Clean Machine, to really help people find a way to maximize their health through fitness and a plant-based diet, high in fiber. That's why I produced clean green protein, the highest in fiber of all the plant proteins currently on the market, all the top selling plant proteins, higher than Vega, Garden of Life, higher than all of them, right? And the reason for that, higher in polyphenols, remember those are the two, higher in polysaccharides. Why? Because we're using the whole plant, the whole lentine plant in the protein so that you can get all these health benefits. You get to participate in this beautiful synergistic cycle of working out, having your probiotics, then supply the things that you need to remove that lactic acid, lower your inflammation, and improve your recovery times, and lower your body fat. Remember that GPL-1 is actually reducing all that, getting that sugar sent directly to where it's need to go. That muscle that you just charge for your workouts, that's where it needs to go. Without the proper GPL-1, which is produced by the bacteria, which eat only fiber. Are we connecting the dots here? Do we see how important fiber is to your workout, to your overall health, to your immune production, especially in this day and age? That's why I love science. We are now starting to see, yes, fiber is truly important. It is digested through our whole digestive tract and it is important for our overall health and fitness. That's why I am really, really trying to share as much as possible how important whole food nutrition is and why I produced clean green protein instead of the standard pea and rice isolates that are out there. This is using the whole whole food lentine. It is in its whole natural state. The only thing that's pressed out is water, right? Even contains naturally occurring B12, one of the first plants found to do that. So truly high in nutrition, the highest in nutrient density of almost every plant that we know, including Moringa, uh, all of those out there, higher in fiber. And it's 20% of that is actually pure prebiotic fibers. Now, our digestion tract is set up, as we just seen, 52 different enzymes to break down all the different types of fiber that we can consume from plants. We used to think, oh, only prebiotic fibers can be broken down. And then we're like, oh, wait, they actually eat polyphenols too. Oh, wait, they eat other types of polysaccharides too. This study changes everything and shows 52 different enzymes, 13 different families of enzymes are breaking down all these different types of fibers that we're consuming in plants. We used to think this was just a waste product, that fiber just ended up in the toilet, and that's all it was. Now we know how important it is to our overall health. 
I hope you get a lot out of this. I'll post the rest of the studies in just a moment when I'm off. I hope you enjoyed this one. And I hope you, if you like it, share it, please, because we need to get this information out there. I'm just one person. I have a very small following. So I'm counting on you to help share some of this information with people you know. And let's get this information. Let's get this conversation started. The fiber is totally important. That It is the fourth macronutrient, fiber, protein, carbohydrates, and fatty acids, especially essential fatty acids, all important for our overall health. We'll have some more great news for you tomorrow. <laughs> and for those of you watching in the future, just ignore that statement. <laughs> we got a good big announcement coming up tomorrow. Um, but uh, stay tuned on our Facebook page for a nice new announcement. Uh, we have the launch of Cell Block 80 and the new formula re coming out. More ashwagandha, two and a half times more ashwagandha, more health benefits, more capsules, more of everything. And we just keep it the same price. As a matter of fact, it's on sale right now if you are watching in this in January 2021. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Again, give it a like, uh, give it a share, more importantly, or just start the discussion. Share the studies with doctors out there. And let's get this conversation going so this information spreads to a larger consumer. Fiber is just as important as those other macronutrients for our overall health, including our relationship with our microbiome, which we now are understanding is far more important than we ever knew. Well, I love science. And remember, tomorrow I may have a new study that says this is even wrong. So take it with a grain of salt. This is great information. Share it until we have more better information to replace it. That's what I love about science. It keeps me excited, looking forward to the future. I will continue to do my best to find this new research, put it into layman's terms and share it with you. And I hope you can share it forward as well. Thank you all. Have a great weekend. The next time I'll be talking to you, I'll be one year older, not technically a year older, but I'll be 58 celebrating my birthday. So thanks again for watching and um, stay tuned for some great new announcements. We've got lots of exciting stuff coming up. Have a great week, everyone.